Hello everyone and welcome back to this episode where in behind me there is already a abortive and stuttering uh, nether portal sound because we are in the twilight forest. We found the twilight forest. Well, we actually found the twilight forest. I say found. We made the portal the stream before last and then last stream we went into it and explored it. Um, and we explored it closely because we hadn't generated any of it at the time so it was very laggy so we had a look around a little bit but it was causing us trouble because the server was excuse me trying to keep up with everybody in there at once and creating new chunks um now it did cause me to wonder with this thing making this noise what happens if we put a nether portal in the twilight forest um maybe we can find out maybe somebody already knows uh, I have put a waypoint down. This, when we do this whole thing with the creative mode and the blah blah blah, um, I get a copy of the map, but I don't get any of the stuff that I had explained. My journey map is completely wrong um, for what we've already explored because it's not the server. The journey map doesn't know that it's the same map, uh, so it's not telling me anything. But we did dig around. We put some torches here, here and there. Um, if you have a look here, uh, what did I do? I accidentally dropped something, and now I have <laughs> I dropped the candle. I got an achievement. Um, we explored a bit. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I was saying that the uh, Twilight Forest is permanent twilight. We never get any day, but we never get any night either. And the majority of it is nighttime spawnable. So you don't really need to put torches down, but every now and then there is a really, really dense tree that prevents any light getting through. Uh, and it's red under there, and of course it's underground as well. So it's not completely immune to spawning, but you don't have to coat the place in torches like you normally do in Minecraft, which is nice. Um, <clears throat> we found we started off here. That was there. This was here. We walked in here, and we found there's a spawner here. <clears throat> not quite sure what's in it, and we couldn't really figure it out at the time. I think, or maybe someone did. Um, but you see how the thing in the up there doesn't actually tell us. It just says. It says Skeleton Druid. That's new. It's fixed. Brilliant. Uh, I don't know what a Skeleton Druid is. So that didn't really help us. <laughs> and um, these chests were all very disappointing, which is most disappointing, I have to be honest. Um, <clears throat> they're currently empty because we did take what was in it. But if we have a look over here at this um, maze that we discovered, which apparently is cheating, by the way, if you want to use a slime sling to look at the maze, but uh, you should note that if you stand on this, uh, this, is, this hedge is prickly. It hurts. You can't actually stand on here for too long and get any information, but you can sort of sling yourself into the air and see what's what. Uh, but anyway, the slime sling is part of the game. In my opinion, that's not cheating. That's just using the tools available to you. But these chests anyway were disappointing as well. So not cheating in exploring this maze didn't get me enough <clears throat> to make me feel like okay about going to the effort of not cheating. These are terrible. I don't know what I'm hearing and it frightens me. So I don't want to explore anything that we haven't already explored. I've been told off for doing that. Um, it, to be, I will say that I didn't consider looking to see whether a nether fortress was accessible was spoilers, but of course not everybody who's playing with us has um, seen all these things before. So I'm trying to make sure I show you what we've already seen. And I think we went this way. Yeah, there it is. Um, but obviously I don't have the map to tell me where we have and haven't been, so I'm gonna... Apologies if I do it wrong. Uh, there's cicadas everywhere, there's fireflies everywhere, and we learned that in... Oh, how loud are you? Uh, I learned that inside... We've also uh, aggroed the lich because... <laughs> um, we were still using the slime sling, which apparently is... Cheating in some situations and mad lulls in other situations, but you can climb this. Uh, and by the way, this is hands off look. You have to press any buttons and you go really, really fast up a, <clears throat> up a ladder or, or vines, which is brilliant. Uh, we climbed up here, we jumped and we slime slinged our way over here. But if you go in here, like, right now, uh, apparently, maybe you have to be in survival mode? Yeah. <clears throat> this horrible hair-raising, eye-burning rain of whatever um, greets you. And we have an inkling that we have to go and find another mob in the twilight forest and take it apart into, and then we make a, a thing and the thing would turn off this force field because um you can't break uh, you can't break anything here all this just returns with this thing on right 
you can feck off. But it seems like in game mode zero, uh, you can break it. So let's not go in there because I'll get told off for spoiling. I don't know what's in there myself, so that would be a very fair thing to say as a spoiler. I'm noticing there are slime islands here as well. That's cool. <clears throat> Hugely tall trees. These are the sorts of trees where you'll find that there's a red underneath it. So you want to light these up. Um, what bandits will spawn in here? But there you go. There's a twilight forest. We have generated a huge amount of this, far more than we intended to, because um, somebody may have thought that the radius of generation was in chunk uh, within blocks, whereas it was in chunks, and chunks are 256 blocks because they're 16 by 16, so we actually ended up with 256 times more blocks than we intended to. <sighs> but at least we've got plenty to explore. <coughs> Excuse me. So the maze there is um, just one of them, and, and the Lich Tower, one or two of many, many things that we can find in here. Um, and that will be next, by the way. You're probably watching this on the very day that we're playing again. Because I, I was going to say I'm too lazy to um, record, but I'm not. It's just that I never really get around to it, and it is now Sunday evening. Remember, we play at half past seven on Monday evenings, so this will probably actually end up going live on Monday or very late on Sunday. Uh, other things that have happened, we have made this uh, coke oven, finally, at last. I believe the coke oven is used to make... This is actually used to make uh, cold coke, but <laughs> obviously, which is... A real thing, it's a <clears throat> some sort of magical form of coal. I can't remember uh, exactly what the difference is between coal and coal coke, but coal coke burns hotter, it's better, and we need it, I believe, for making steel. So we're now all on our way to making steel, and steel is the next step in Tinker's Construct. Uh, called, uh, it's, it's a quest, it's the next quest, um, where we can start making better tools. Um, one of which is the hammer. We do have the hammers. Oh, right, I forgot about this. We do have the hammers uh, from immersive engineering, thermal foundation. No, yeah, thermal foundation. So that's um, a different mod. It has a hammer, and they're just mining in three by three sections, but they wear out very, very quickly, which is no fun. Um, <clears throat> it does get you through, you know, a lot of ground very quickly, but kind of to some extent, what's the point? You might as well just use uh, I only want a two by one to strip mine but it's nice having an open uh, corridor underground I think I showed last time the uh, mine that I've made which I did in between streams for the first time in my life uh, I actually played in between streams uh, yeah because it was where the uh, tactically deployed lava was so if we have a look this was all made with a, a hammer here and then we ended it down here, and then all this was made with a hammer here too. The ones from Thermal Foundation, they break very quickly, and they don't... You can't repair them. We can now. Um, but I say they're not easy to repair. They're not trivial to repair. But to make the Tinker's ones, which are easier to repair, very much not trivial to make. Um, we did some more exploring around here. We got some more lava but the key thing we want to say about this lava is that now we the, what we can do to repair things is to use this uh, magma anvil here so you put something in here <clears throat> something broken that's in here and it will use magma very very quickly and uh, repair it so the more durability it has in the first place the more magma it uses up so what i did as i made these now in thermal dynamics which is um just thermal expansions um conduits basically there are different types of fluid ducts and if you use the wrong one you uh, end up melting so let's say we took some of these oh, let me put a uh, cheat mode on done give me some of these so what would happen if i put this here is nothing because it will not try and fill it up but that's not because of the type of fluid it is, that's because I didn't use a servo. So we'll, we'll go through this in a minute. Not this, this. So if I put a servo on here, in fact, I'll show you right now. Now I have a servo on my Doodrama Bob. If I right click this, I can now play with it. It doesn't do anything, but there's a register control. If you turn it off to ignored, the servo will start drawing from there into the thing based on, see this arrow, it's an arrow. It's a very crude arrow because it's Minecraft, it only has so many pixels, but it's an arrow. So I'll turn this off. It will start filling it with lava, and I wonder what happens. 
Eventually this will be sad with me. Right? Uh, I believe this will break eventually anyway. Uh, you need a hardened fluid up, which is this one, to safely transport lava. Because lava's hot, and it will burn a standard fluid duct, or so I was given to understand. Uh, <laughs> we were, I was, everyone shouted, well they didn't shout at me, but they were worried. They were very worried about what I was doing. Um, because I put fluid ups from here to here, and basically this is draining from this tank, filling up the thing because I put a hardened fluid up here and a servo like I just showed you on there to draw out of this tank and into that. Problem with these particular tanks. There we go. <laughs> Whew, that scared me. Didn't expect that to happen. Is uh they don't connect sideways. So we've got all these tanks, but if you want to start if you want to replace this, you have to move these across. Which is fine for now. Um because you can pick these up if you use a pick, if you do it properly. You can grab these full you can keep them full or you can use them empty and you can take them downstairs fill them up with lava with a bucket and bring them back uh, without losing any of the contents of them which is amazing now there is another type of tank let's see if we can find it uh, and i don't know if it's available by the way the ender tank i'm presuming is going to be extremely expensive but those are cool as well um there's a type of tank that connects sideways and i can't remember what mod it's from but i don't see it here so i'm guessing we don't have it uh, but it would be nice to have a tank that is big uh, and covers the wall and is and connects sideways basically um it may exist and maybe the gang will know which one it is and show it to me whenever we play i was gonna say tomorrow but it could be you know today that could have already happened if you're watching this in the future uh so maybe we'll replace this with a big tank if we can find one that does it but i'm guessing that since we haven't it doesn't exist so that's the advancements we've made in lava technology. Let's have a look at this uh, setup of this pulverizer as well because it has been improved a little bit. If you look behind it, there's a uh, chest. Is this the situation? Where, what? Yeah. So this pulverizer, <coughs> excuse me for coughing, um, is in a little bit of a complex setup, you might notice, because there's a lot of things going on. Let's have a look at its configuration so we can uh, pull it apart. The top is set to orange, which corresponds to this and this, which are the two outputs of the pulverizer. Now, when you pulverize ore, there is a chance that you get an extra output. The type of ore determines what the type of output you get is, and I believe also the likelihood of it. So um, silver and lead are very closely tied, and in the real life as well, you find lead and silver next to each other in ore form. Uh, if you pulverize lead you get a bit of silver and if you pulverize silver you get a bit of lead um, for example silver let's say get rid of this and look for it's just pulverized silver Pull, yeah so if i look for the recipe for this uh, excuse me <coughs> you can see that there is the correct blah 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 there's the blah, blah, blah. Uh, pulverizer um if you use silver plate you get the silver but if you use silver ore it's 10 percent chance of getting a piece of pulverized lead um you can actually consider this just to be the game saying you get one tenth of a piece of lead uh from each one but you can't have a tenth of a piece of pulverized lead so they just give you one in ten instead and then the recipe for this is actually also from pulverizing lead and you get uh well not what i wanted pulverizing lead ore which has a 10 percent chance to give you silver so both of these are related to one another lots of things have that Anyway, the point is, if you wanted to do it differently, you could have the main output go in one direction, it's red, and the other output uh, is, I guess, like yellow, is different, and then orange is the two of them together. And you can see how it tries to give you some information about the fact that this one and this one are both going in that direction, and then this one's going in. So the colors approximately tell you what's going on if you get the hang of it. Um, but we've also got the input is from the behind. That's what that one is, which is here. So if you put stuff in here, stuff in here, 
sorry. Um, it will be hopped out into the pulverator and also pulled out of here. I'm not 100% sure. Right, so this is pulling out of there and back into there. So I'm not sure why we're filling stuff out of here and into here. I'm sure Tristan can explain, but the idea is if you put a bunch of ores in here, eventually <clears throat> these will be automatically ejected out of the top, which will put them in here. And then this servo is the same as the other one, but this is items. It will suck things out of these drawers and put them into that drawer, which is probably what's happened to that cinnabar there. And anything that doesn't fit in that drawer, that's probably what it is. If you've done too many, these will fill up and then it'll put everything in there, which means there'll never be anything left in here, really. Uh, unless this fills up with pulverized stuff, but then you can come back and get it. Uh, you can see what you've made and all that sort of goodness. Minor automation, so it's, uh, that's what we want to see. Automation is good. And then over here, Mike's moved. Uh, I, I guess the others helped. I'm not actually sure who did it. <laughs> so I kind of turned up and it was all done. These are them shulker boxes that are actually vanilla, apparently, uh, which is new. Oh no, iron chests. So maybe they're vanilla now? I don't know. Uh, I don't play vanilla and. I haven't played anything since 5.12 because uh, 1.12 because no one no one makes anything work. So all of our stuff that we were doing over there, some of it's now over here. The workshop where we need to put these tanks of uh, fart gas and stuff next to them are now over here. It is getting a little bit pesky, bouncing from here to there and back again to get all the materials that we need. But I think over time we will start um, organizing things a little bit better so that some things over there are over here, some things that are over here are in a third place and blah blah blah, so everything, you know, becomes... Well, we want automation to happen, what we really want to do is go and get some stuff, put it in a chest, and then we get uh, items and materials and stuff we want to make, which is why we still have any roofs on the damn things. Because we keep going and playing the game instead of building... buildings, it's silly. <clears throat> anyway. Uh, let's have a quick look at what other people have been doing, and then we'll sign off. Uh, give me the threads, please. Minecraft threads. So, Tristan was doing a lot of lava gathering. Redstone plants. Redstone plants are pretty cool. There's one of those um, things that's just, just making redstone for us uh, by growing it. We visited the Twilight Forest. We visited Forest. We went back to the nether to get more stuff and die a bit more. Uh, there's a lot of lava down there in the nether, so it's good for that. <clears throat> Oh, Lawrence's new stuff. That's probably worth looking at as well. So the other thing we did was, I don't know if you've seen this. I think we saw this last time. Oh no, I saw this while mining, but I don't think I've shown it to you lot yet. Um, <clears throat> this is sort of the mid temporary storage. Now this thing here is called a drawer controller. And this basically acts as an inventory for putting things into drawers. So if you had, uh, what if I double right click on this now? Does anything go away? No, I don't know. I'm surprised actually, we should have had maybe some stone bricks in here. Look at all these, uh, different various woods. When you divide a draw into four, the you don't get any more storage space, but you get more slots. So you can have four things in the drawer, but a quarter as much of each one as in a single draw. Um, but you'll notice that this and this and this are all hooked up by the same drawers. And every now and then you have uh, one of these controller slaves, which just means that you can extend the number of drawers that the controller can be attached to. And then if you double right click on this, it will just put everything, I think double right click, will put everything from your inventory that fits in the drawers into all of the drawers, which is way faster. You don't have to sort anything out unless you haven't got anywhere in the drawers for them, in which case you do. Um, for example, let's say we took all of these out of here. If I double right click this, they disappeared from my inventory and they are now uh, back in here. So that will work for anything in here. These ones are not connected for some reason. It's probably due to the fact that this compacting drawer is not in use right now. By the way, the compacting drawer is kind of useful because it will create the compacted version of anything that you put into it. If I were to put some cobblestone into here, I should find that this is uh, one times compressed cobblestone. This is two times compressed cobblestone. But to do two times compressed, compressed cobblestone, it's, well, it's nine. You should be able to get one, actually. No, it's seven. You only get seven single compressed cobblestone out of uh, 64 cobblestone, because it's nine cobblestone to create a single compressed cobblestone. And it's nine compressed cobblestone to make a doubly compressed cobblestone, which is nine squared, not, not 27. <laughs> I was thinking 27 for some reason. Which is nine squared, which is 81, obviously. 
um, compressed cobblestone, uh, well, raw cobblestone to start off with. So if I put this in here now, then we should be able to get, yeah, so we've got a two times compressed cobblestone. So I actually really like the way that you um, get the texture is getting smaller and smaller each time. <laughs> I like that. Um, this is a good way of quickly compressing stuff if you just cannon everything into here. Um, but there you go. Anyway, we've seen that. Uh, we're talking about Lawrence's stuff. Lawrence has started doing some blood magic, I believe. We we're already over here because that's where the Twilight Portal is. Uh, blood bank de deposits. No vampires allowed. I'm guessing that's something to uh, fix it. But I'm... Oh, let's talk about these elevators as well, because I flew at the top. These are really cool. Woo! Woo! It's a simple block. It's a single block. You'd stand on it. If you jump, it'll go to the one above you, if it's close enough. If you uh, sneak, it'll go to the one below you, if it's close enough. And there you go. In fact, you probably should have one more just to get downstairs with. But that's okay. Uh, it's a simple block. Let's have a look at it. <coughs> Recipe. So it's not actually terribly expensive. It's way more expensive than it is normally, but it's just bronze, wool, uh, some redstone. This luminescence is probably the hardest thing to get, but glowstones from the nether, we've got all this stuff now. Um, so those are extremely handy and they save you a lot of time and heartache <laughs> climbing stairs. Um, lots of blood and stuff. Now, there is a whole new bunch. In fact, really you should watch Lawrence's streams to really understand this, but Blood magic has begun. There is a concept of sacrifice. You are basically bleeding yourself to fill up this blood altar. I think that's this one. And with the blood in the altar, you can then perform magic. Currently, we are capable of creating uh, lava blocks and water blocks, but I'm not entirely... I can't show you, basically, because I think half of it's in Lawrence's inventory and half of it requires you to actually be a blood alchemist, uh, which requires you to go through some of the quests yourself. Um, so actually, there was less to show than I expected. But soon, that single altar is going to grow into a, a huge altar as you start to try and do more and more complex magic. So hopefully, we can get some of that going, and I can show you next time. Um, there's a lot of farming going on. These are all getting bigger, but these things are slow progress, really. You know, farming is just make the farm bigger, pick all the stuff, go and get some more stuff. So there's um, the progress that you can see from farming, unfortunately, is really how many of these things have got stuff in it. Like we've got as far as, um, I can't remember what this level of essence is, but there's more essences. It's got four level of essences already, and that's similar to the compacting draw, the compacted cobblestone. You need eight of each one to make the next ones. So the numbers you need inflate very quickly. Here's those uh, redstone orchids that Tristan was making and look they're growing on redstone ore and yet yeah they are that's cool it doesn't look like it because it's it must be draining the redstone to make I like it and then of course it changes back that's really cool um so there's a small but steady supply of redstone going on we've got all of this stuff which has basically taken a long time, it doesn't look very impressive, which is kind of the same uh, with this mod pack. This doesn't really give me much to talk about, but it kind of implies that Pete's not doing anything, but he is, but I'm not doing anything because I've got to build uh, all these roofs and stuff, but I haven't got around to it. Um, and I think I found out in the last one that we have those really impressive doors. So I'm half expect I'm half considering um, like remodeling some of this just to make use of them. Because they're so cool. But uh, why is there a second grave? <laughs> also. I thought um I thought that was spawnable crosses, but it's not. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> I thought there was only one grape. What's going on? Uh, let's see. Lawrence bled out to get some magic done. Pete did. Rock mining did. Oh. Let's call Pete out on failing to use proper breadcrumbs when exploring a cave so that he and other people get easily lost because he can't put torches on the right. Uh, I'm not going to beat that one, but you know what you do. Managed to be me a second ahead. Oh, apparently, Pete was trolling us by emptying all the chests, but you've seen what was in the other chests. They're bad. They have basically vanilla loot in them, which is a bit of a shame, I think, because other chests in dungeons obviously have not vanilla loot. Uh, quests were done. We've got a long way to go on a lot of the um, 
a lot of the technology trees, but eventually we will get some automation going properly. Um, I'd like to be able to automate sticks, but I'm not sure how to do it. But I'm going to leave that there. Thanks for watching. Um, you'll probably be watching this on the same day that we're about to film again, uh, about to stream again. So come along for that. Remember, it's going to be half past seven on Mondays. So I'll guess I'll see you there. Consider this a teaser and a taster for what we're going to do next. And I promise you that it's a lot less boring to watch us play than it is trying to explain what we did because we're actually doing stuff. Uh, so I hope that you will join us and we'll see you then and we'll see how far Mike gets on this ridiculous construction before he just gives up and makes Lawrence do it. Uh, so until next time, thank you for watching and I will see you then. Bye.